This week, I want to talk about Google Workspace, formerly G Suite. You may have heard that Google recently rebranded its primary collaboration and email solution, G Suite, to Google Workspace. Along with that has come some significant changes to the brand, the product, and to the tiers or SKUs that are available to customers. I want to cover these in detail because there are some, as I said, big or significant changes. If this is of interest to you, if you are currently going to become a Google customer soon, or if you are, are, are already a Google customer, then I would suggest that you stay tuned. As I said, I've broken down this update into the three distinct parts. The rebrand or change of the actual name and why Google has done it. The feature releases, and there have been some significant feature releases in the last couple of months that have sort of brought this all together. And then also the changes to the tiers or SKUs. And as I said, these are probably the most significant for current customers. Firstly, the rebrand, Google Workspace instead of G Suite. So I think Google definitely wanted to make sure that Google was in the name. And this was something that they stated to partners and to customers when the rebrand came about, that it was important to them um, to have Google within the actual name of their most important productivity suite. I think it lends a certain weight to both their seriousness um, within this space and for ourselves as partners, talking to customers. Um, also, the whole workspace piece I think is interesting because work is no longer a location. And this is something that partners in Google have been talking about for a long, long time, but that the global pandemic over the last uh, six months or so has shown that many of us can indeed work from home, um, even when people thought that it wasn't possible. And companies that have been on Google definitely have found this um, an, easy, an easier transition. And so this idea of having the word office within a productivity suite is kind of becoming irrelevant and that it's really a workspace and that work happens uh, wherever we are. Interestingly, um, Microsoft had a recent change at the beginning of this year uh, prior to the pandemic where their business tier of Office 365, they rebranded to Microsoft 365. And they still have the Office branding within the uh, enterprise tiers. But I think it's interesting uh, that they're also lending their name to their own productivity suite. Uh, and so the two major players sort of aligning there. Now, what about the feature set? As I said, there were some significant feature releases over the last few months. We've seen obviously a heavy uh, push on Google Meet competing with Zoom and with Microsoft Teams. And so we've seen lots of updates to that. And we've been talking about those on our channel. But the kind of Google Workspace um, solution uh, that, that, that Google are sort of rebranding around um, is really about bringing it all together. And so they're trying to bring together all of the different tools, the mail, the chat, the meetings, the documents, all into a single location. And whether this is on your mobile device or whether this is on your desktop, you, you will now be able to do things like accessing files uh, within your Gmail and having a video call um, overlaid over or what they are calling picture in picture, overlaid over um, a document. Um, you now already have chat and meeting rooms and, and rooms all within um, your Gmail account. So here's an example here where someone is in a video call, they open up a document and they can very easily or simply overlay um, the, the meeting or the video call over the actual document. And so we're starting to see where Google are trying to bring everything together. They realize that people are working from home and that they're having these challenges of multiple devices um, and multiple applications. And they're trying to make things as simple as possible for people to work from any device, um, from any location. And, and as I said, really trying to, to bring it all together. And we are going to do a separate video sort of demoing these newer features um, as, a, as a single video. Um, so we will be doing that at some later stage when everything is released. Now, the most important update for current customers is really the tiers or sometimes they're, they're, they're called SKUs. Um, internally. And, and the different tiers of the, of the product, I think it's quite interesting here 
Um, Google is definitely aligning more with Microsoft here. Uh, and I'm going to be show, showing you how when we sort of bring these side by side, how it's making it easier for customers to compare. And if you're a new customer, it will definitely make it easier for you if you're coming from um, Microsoft or you're considering Office 365 it will definitely make it easier uh, to review that and compare those to what Google is offering because the tiers now, there, there's almost a, a, no, I don't mean features, but um, you know, go, what Google's equivalent is, what Microsoft's equivalent is. Um, I think there's definitely this separation happening between business and enterprise. And I think that that's good because we have had um, some customers over the years or, or seen companies over the years who've stuck with um, the basic tiers of, of G Suite or now Google Workspace and really the, the, the basic t uh, tools or feature set didn't, didn't fit the customer's requirements um, but they were, they were still you know, um, sticking with it uh, despite really requiring business or enterprise level features. And so Google are making this delineation now and they're saying at 300 seats you should be on enterprise and you, you, you can't buy any many more than uh, 300 seats on business, so you need to move to enterprise. And this is exactly what Microsoft do as well. So it's more of that aligning with um, what, is, what is really the norm within the industry. And I think for um, new customers, there's now more choices of tiers. And I think more choice is always good. Uh, the comparability I think is, is excellent. And then also, as I said, um, having more choice. Now, there, as, as I said, there are some negatives for, for current customers, but I'll, I'll go into those. There is one big positive at the end, so you can stay for that. So these are the Microsoft tiers here. And we, we can see that Microsoft has um, Microsoft 365 Basic, um, Business Basic, Business Standard, and Business Premium. And if we overlay Google's business tiers over here, their business starter, business standard, and business plus, we can see that they're very much aligned. Again, I'm not talking about a feature for feature comparison. I'm just saying in general, um, we can see that, that uh, Google are attempting to align with um, the, the options that Microsoft have. And we can see the pricing is also fairly similar as well. Now, if we look at the enterprise tiers within Microsoft, Microsoft have Microsoft 365 apps for enterprise, which is essentially its um, uh, office only. So it's the, the Microsoft Office bit uh, without the kind of email and calendar part. So um, Google, Google have a, a, a version of this, um, which is essential. So that, that's what, what that one would be. Their E1 is sort of like a, a, a low cost tier, maybe a... Um, what, what someone might refer to as a deskless worker, someone who is, doesn't really sit at their desk. Um, and then they've got E3 and E5. Um, and, and we can see if we overlay Google's uh, options over this, we can see that where, where Google's ones align. Um, so Enterprise Essentials, as I said, really aligns with this, where it's just the Google Drive and Meet part, so sort of competing with this one. Currently, Google don't have one for this, but sort of watch this space. I, I think it's, it's very possible that they might eventually. And then we have Enterprise Standard is really aligning with E3, and we have um, uh, Enterprise Plus, uh, which is aligning with um, E5. Okay, so uh, Google don't have pricing publicly uh, listed for their enterprise um, versions, but we can imagine, as with the business, the pricing is going to be fairly similar. I can tell you on the higher end that Google is certainly uh, a little bit cheaper. So current customers. First thing, if you are on um, a G Suite Enterprise customer right now, you have nothing to worry about. Uh, al almost nothing is going to change for you. There's a, a very small price increase, um, although most enterprise customers do get decent discounts, so probably not something to worry about. Um, but you're essentially going to be now Workspace Enterprise Plus. So th this is the only tier that is actually being rebranded or, or changed in, in its name. All of the other G Suite versions are going away, whereas G Suite Enterprise is being uh, renamed Workspace Enterprise Plus. So if you're a G Suite Enterprise customer right now, you will automatically be on Workspace Enterprise Plus. So you have, as I said, nothing to worry about. Now, if you are a G Suite basic or business customer, then you are at risk of either losing features if you maintain the same price or an increased price if you do nothing. Now, as I said, this is all based on you not doing anything. At the end, I'll be talking about what actions you should be taking to maintain the features that you have uh, and hopefully uh, maintain a similar price point. If you do nothing when you're um, 
when your contract renews, you will be pushed onto one of the new tiers. So if you, if you do nothing right now, you will be pushed onto one of the new tiers. It, or if you're a flexible customer um, in, in, uh, in, in early 2021 or Q1 2021, you'll be pushed onto a new tier as well. Okay, so that's one of the new tiers that I spoke about. I would recommend that you talk to your Google partner in order to make a decision. Google partners have the most amount of information about this and will be able to help you to make an informed decision. An example of this is a comparison sheet. So we've done up this very, very detailed comparison sheet. In fact, it's so long, I can only fit half of it on here, even though I've divided it into two. Um, but we've created this for our customers. Uh, we've also, there's also, uh, which has been sent around, this wasn't something we created, but a comparison a spreadsheet which compares all of the different features on the new SKUs with the old ones. And I think this is very, valu very valuable. And most Google partners I know um, have access to this. I, al I also created a upgrade decision path for customers to try and help them think about just the key questions. Uh, we have a little warning up here saying it's not an exhaustive list of questions because it isn't, but it is just some key questions you should think about. Like, do you require data regions? If yes, then you're going to require Google Workspace Enterprise Plus. If not, then you move on to the next question. Do you have 300 users? If yes, then you're going to require Enterprise uh, and one of the Enterprise SKUs, Essentials, um, Enterprise Standard or Plus. If no, you move on to the next one. Do you require unlimited storage? If yes, and so on and so forth. So these are the type of resources that Google partners have to help you make an informed decision. And I've linked to many of these within our blog, so I would recommend that you take a look at our blog and we, we will link to um, many of our free resources. Some of them are, are just for our own customers. So I wanted to take an example of a customer on G Suite Business and what it might mean for them. And really to state that G Suite Business is not the same as Google Workspace Business Standard, which is its equivalent tier in price, okay? but it is really its equivalent here in price only. If a customer was to, was to stay and do nothing and move from G Suite Business to uh, Google Workspace Business and keep the same pricing, this is what they would lose. They would lose Google Vault, they would lose data regions, they would lose unlimited storage, and they would also be limited to 300 users, as I said, as is the case with all business tiers. Now, this is just an example, and this is based on somebody not doing anything, not taking any action um, before the renewal date or, or before early next year. Um, I actually saw this on Tech Republic, and I thought this was quite interesting, where this gentleman has um, G Suite Business, and he is um, going to upgrade, but it's actually telling him that unless he moves to enterprise, all of the other business tiers from G Suite Business are technically a downgrade because you would be losing features. Um, and I thought that was quite a, an interesting catch by the Tech Republic uh, guys. So this is the important one that I was saying at the end, that there are upgrade discounts available. And when I say there are upgrade discounts, I mean there are significant upgrade discounts, more than I have ever seen uh, from Google. So if you are thinking of upgrading to enterprise, or as I said, if you are on G Suite Basic or on G Suite Business, then you need to get in contact with your Google partner as soon as possible to make an informed decision and to get access to these upgrade, uh, upgrade discounts. Uh, they're only available for a very limited period of time. We're telling all of our customers, you need to have spoken to us and made a decision before the end of the year because the discounts are only available um, until I think the first week in January and then they go away. And after that date, people will start to be being forced onto the, um, or pushed onto the new tiers and they won't uh, have access to these discounts. So if you'd like more information, go to damsincloud.com and check out our blog post on this particular um, topic or go to workspace.google.com. Google have their own pricing page on there, which does give some basic uh, feature for feature comparison. Um, but as I said, it's really getting into the nitty gritty of it that um, you kind of need to figure out what makes sense for you. Um, another interesting one is, for example, chat externally outside of your domain isn't available on Business Starter, which is the equivalent to G Suite Basic. Uh, that 300 user limit is definitely going to be something um, that will be a challenge for a lot of G Suite Business customers and things like uh, the 300 user limit. So I urge you, as I said, to talk to your local Google partner, whoever that may be, 
um, or get in touch with ourselves if you don't have a Google partner um, at www.damsincloud.com. Thanks for your time. I hope you found this uh, video informative. If so, please give us a like uh, and a subscribe and I will chat to you guys next time.